Uh, good morning, and I was really fascinated by the previous two lectures of Dr. Yenning and Dr. Hodges because uh, they were talking about the things which we study uh, in a, a medical academy in order to research the manual therapy. And this is really fascinating, but the question is, okay, we have a great theories, but what do we, why, why do we need theories for? It needs to be a practical application. And uh, Dr. Palama developed a practical application of neurophysiological principles we, we just discussed for one hour here. So this is the pinprick. But in reality, it's the best uh, spinothalamic tool for treating pain. If somebody asked me three years ago, okay, can you treat pain in the neck, in the back, uh, in the elbow, in the knee with this, I would have laughed. But today is a reality, and today we treat every day many, many patients with this tool. And this is neurophysiological principles which we're going to discuss. And uh, Dr. Andrew Steele stated that all the diseases, or most of the diseases, uh, they're not really the entities by themselves, but they're just the result of the nervous system to regain the function which was lost during some kind of aversive event. So, something aversive happened, the body lost the function, and now we've got the consequences as some kind of dysfunctions. And then he also recognized that the body uh, is integrated, and we cannot really divide the visceral and somatic uh, function. It's all all in one. Then Mr. Denslow, Dr. Denslow researched the influence of palpation uh, with electromyography and he found that any kind of palpation would cause the somatic response. So what does it mean? We press here and we get a response somewhere in the reflex activity. Okay? And today we know that somatic and visceral function are closely integrated. So what do we do every day with our patients when they come for the manual therapy? We're going to do stimulus, we're going to do mobilization, we're going to do trusts, we're going to do tissue manipulations, we're going to do fascia manipulations. What is, all, um, what is the base of all these stimulations? Those are mechanical stimulus which we apply to the particular areas of the body. Okay? And then those kind of stimulus could produce a certain response. If we know it, if we don't know it, the response is going to be there. And the response is going to be neurophysiological in terms of reflex. So we're going to have automatic reaction for any kind of stimulus we apply. In our real life, all the time, 24 hours a day, we react on different stimulus. Right now you're listening to the sound, at the same time you're aware of the light, and your nervous system is constantly adapting and reacting on the incoming stimulus. And with the normal adaptation, you're not going to get any dysfunctions. But sometimes this reflex activity could be altered and we're going to get the dysfunctions. So in physiology, we study the function of the living system. And uh, what is the actual word function? It's the relation put, uh, relationship between input and output. So this is how the central nervous system works. And the input is going to be any kind of stimulus which we do with the patient, touch, compress, stretch, uh, look at him, talk to him. This is all input which is going to be processed in the central nervous system. And then, as a result, we're going to get an output. Uh, we're going to get uh, either, uh, either muscle activity, or we're going to get visceral activity, or gland secretion, or some kind of response. It could be also emotional response, it could be also psychological response, even cognitive response. And reflex is a very um, complex relationship between those inputs and outputs. Uh, normally, re the reflex is considered like a monosynaptic reflex, and we know DTR, we hit the tendon, and the muscle moves. In reality, it's much more complicated. Okay. This is uh, the normal, the simple, simpler reflex like we know it in the books. And we have an afferent stimulus, and then we have an afferent response. But in reality, but that's what's happening in reality with any kind of stimulus. For example, you see very often when uh, the kid is crying, and the mom is rubbing his head, and the kid cries even more and more and more. What happens? She gives a nociception stimulus. Of course, she doesn't know about it. But crude touch is a nociceptive, nociceptive stimulus. And that's why she increases the stimulus and kids cry even more. Just an example. 
So any kind of uh, stimulus going to be uh, controlled on different uh, level of nervous system. It could be on the level of the spinal cord and we can have sensory, vegetative, motor regulation, we can regulate it in the level of the encephalon, mesencephalon and cortex. All those levels are involved with the, could be involved with a simple touch of the pinprick like that. This is also a nociception. Nociception doesn't mean pain. Nociception is just a stimulus and we have a normal inhibition pattern. Every single stimulus creates a response, facilitation or inhibition. Nociceptive stimulus is, for example, if I use the pinprick, I want to withdraw from the stimulus. This is not pain, this is just a stimulus. When the brain receives different information from different parts of the, of the, of the stimulus, for example, Gorgias, Pacini, uh, Nociceptor, Spinotalamic, whatever, we, the brain get all the information and if this fits or is enough to, co to consider it a pain, now the insula tells us or recognizes it like a pain. Pain is the interpretation, it's not the input, it's interpretation. After interpretation, we have our other part. The process, how we are going to process this information. And then we have the output. When we have a pain, for example, we have a stimulus, we have a specific inhibition pattern. In PDTR, we want to show you what is the specific inhibition pattern for every single stimulus. How to recognize them, how to stimulate them, and how to find the opposite or the, or the pairing receptor that is that increases the increase the, the sense the sensitivity to compensate this first area of stimulus. Uh, okay, the example of what Jose just said uh, would be if the patient comes to the office and he's got pain in the neck and he's complaining about pain in the back, what's happening with him? So obviously he's got altered reflex activity. And obviously, there was an aversive stimulation which caused this uh, uh, alter, alter, alteration of the reflex. So, what do we need to do? We need to identify what was the aversi aversive stimulus. We need to identify the inhibition muscle pattern because with every stimulus, some group of muscles going to be inhibited and some going to be facilitated. And then we have to find the modality uh, of the particular stim. We have to find the compensation area. And we have to uh, elicit the deep tendon reflex or any neutral reflex to reset the neural pathway between the stimulus and the response. So basically it's like neuro reprogramming with a set of neurological challenges. And as a result, immediately we're going to see improvement. We don't treat pain for two or three weeks. We treat pain in one, maximum two sessions. Normally the improvement should be about 50, 80 percent to 100 percent at the first session and then in three sessions should be eliminated unless it's not a hardware problem, structural damage, which would cause, uh, for example, reoccurrence. And we work with all kind of uh, senses. We work with special senses like touch, uh, like um, uh, vision, hearing, taste, vestibular issues. Uh, we work with all the uh, we will work with brain nuclei as well, and all the possible senses which we have in the body. Do you want to demonstrate something before you tell me? Okay. So, we, uh, we have different kind of uh, reflexes. It could be somatosomatic, means muscle to muscle reflexes. It could be muscle to organs, somatovisceral. And all of them could be affected but by one nociceptive stimulus. And I would like to show um, how, it, how it actually happens. This is what caused the... No, no, no. This is what, what caused the reflex alteration. Our modern life is not uh, really in line with our biological reflexes. We have kids' traumas, we have sports, we have all those kind of things which cause the reflex alteration. And how does it actually happen? We have a trauma, for example, we hit, hit, hit uh, the ankle. Then the signal is going to go to the spinal cord. Normally, the signal in the spinal cord should be dealt with and discharged in a normally healthy person. 
if the excessive signal from the receptor field exceeds the compensatory capacity of the nervous system, the signal is going to create an ex uh, excessive facilitation in the spinal uh, cord, meaning producing uh, big quantities of glutamate. Then it's going to affect upper structures and we're going to activate the arousal system in midbrain and we're going to activate uh, locus coeruleus and activate sympathetic parasympathetic response. Then it's going to be activating hypothalamus and hypothalamus uh, hypo hypophysary axis. And then we're going to activate adrenals and production of cortisol. Uh, there's nothing wrong with uh, short-term production of cortisol, but if we're going to have it long time, it's going to go back and facilitate the production of the glutamate in the spinal cord. And that means we're going to have uh, chronic pain. What is chronic pain? It could be considered as memory uh, of the neurotransmitter synapses, and when we have an excessive production of glutamate, it's supposed to be a synaptic memory. And this is only one stimulus which could be like after any, any trauma. And all the stimulus could cause all those uh, changes, including the behavioral and emotional changes. Not all the time people have bad characters. Sometimes it's a huge nociception input which completely destroys their nervous system adaptation. So the consequences of altered reflex uh, Activity, pain, limited range of motion, metabolic problems, visceral problems, biochemical problems, general adaptation problems, and that's what we see in our offices every single day. Do exercise for the patient who has a trauma or has pain inhibition is great, but we need first to reset and treat the receptors. Because if we don't treat the receptors, the muscles are not, we, the brain is not using the muscles because the receptor is firing so, so strong or the sensitivity is, is, the threshold is so low. Then the muscle is going to be weak all the time. If we are going to train a weak muscle because the brain is not using it because it's the normal response to this functional receptor, we can create more dysfunction. We need to treat further dysfunctions and then exercise is great. I want to somebody to help me. Can you help me, please? Please sit. We start with finding the weak muscle. What is weak muscle? It's the myotatic reflex, and again we're testing a somatic reflex. In this case is a sternocleidomastoid muscle. Uh, as soon as he raises the arm of the patient, we can see that the patient can compensate with the upper trapezius trying to move the shoulder like that. He cannot perform the movement properly without help of other muscles. And we're testing the pectoralis major muscle. And this muscle has a hypotonic stretch reflex. Now, how this person can exercise, what he's going to exercise, and in the gym this muscle is not uh, engaging. He's going to be exercising upper trap, not the pectoralis minor. Left side, strong. On the left side, he can do it okay, there is uh, not obvious problem. I rub the pectoralis. We do the stimulus, it's rubbing, crew touch. And we immediately can observe the change of the muscle reflex. If we put electromyographer, that's what we do in the office, we see exactly the change of the figure. So if for him, we, instead of muscle testing, we put the electrodes, we're going to see clearly the change of the electric activity. Few seconds later, but in a few seconds, the anti-steam, because rubbing is the anti-steam for the, for the mechanical receptors, and uh, the reflex activity goes back to normal because it's not enough stimulation. Okay. Lower trap is weak as well. 
uh, lower trapezius has uh, a decreased myotactic reflex as well. From, from the left side, it's, it's very strong. Maybe uh, this, this result of weakness of the muscle is the result of some kind of stimulus which were applied to his body. Again, he does the anti-stimulus, which is rubbing, and we improve the muscle. Now, what happens if he rubs the pectoralis major and tests the lower trap? Both muscles become strong and they change their activity. This one is the primary dysfunction and this one is the compensatory dysfunction. And that's uh, uh, one of the ways how we can find the priority primary dysfunction, the one which causes the problem, and in this case maybe it's uh, spindle cells in the muscle itself or maybe it's some, res uh, some, uh, some uh, hand receptors in the fascia itself, but it affects both muscles, pectoralis major and lower trap. And if we decrease the signal in pectoralis, we can see that uh, lower trap becomes better as well. So one stimulus affects few a group of muscles. But if we do the anti-stimulus for the lower trap, the pectoralis still stay the same because lower trap in this case it's a compensatory muscle. And this is a dysfunction of the spindle, uh, spindle cell receptors. On one side we have a problem with the back fibers. And the spindle cells have two kind of uh, receptors, back, back fibers and chain fibers. And, the other side is the, 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 and they compensate each other. But sometimes they are not only the dysfunction, they are a compensatory dysfunction from another bigger. But sometimes it's not the top dysfunction is just a compensatory dysfunction of meatetic reflex which was created due to the nociception stimulus above that. Now, maybe in this case, clavicle ligaments... And maybe the ligaments are the, in the clavicle could be responsible for this inhibition pattern. Now, see what <laughs> and he touches an area of interclavicular ligament. Uh, as soon as we touch this area of the clavic clavicle nearly to the sternal, the sternal, we have the muscle facilitation, both. So this cause caused, uh, uh, called a muscular ligament reflex, uh, which affects the stretch reflex, and that's why the muscles are inhibited. But the problem comes from the actual ligament. And if we treat the ligament and DTR, then he's not going to have any problems with these muscles anymore. Uh, the diagnostic takes about 99% of the time, treatment takes one second. <laughs> and what it is in PDTR language, it's a dysfunction of the Golgi receptors in the ligament. In FASTA we've got uh, a great number of receptors and a lot of Golgi's as well. The problem could come from the fascia. But why to focus on fascia? But why to focus only on the fascia? Because we have receptor fields everywhere. They're everywhere. Then, now, I'm not against the fascia. I, I'm not against the fascia. I propose to see all receptors in the body. Golgi's are in the fascia. No receptors are in the fascia. But they are as well in the tendons, in the ligaments. And every single one has its own specific associated muscles. Each one, is a specific receptor has a specific inhibition pattern, and this is Golgi has a specific muscles associated with them. The, uh, the, the response of the brain is inhibition or facilitation of the muscles. The other response is increase or decrease the, the production of the glands. Other one is activity inside of the brain. The rest of the, the activity is just information and process. Then we need to test 
but because to test the specific production of the glass is expensive and it's not as fast as the commercial testing. But I am not testing how strong is it, it's him. I am testing how if we can inhibit or not, or is inhibited or not, the myotactic reflex. We're testing reflex. Now, I found here, it's a Golgi. If I make a stimulus to the Golgi, probably here, it's going to be painful, painful. Is it painful? <coughs> and my tool, I discovered a tool, the deep, deep tendon reflex. Now, the tendon reflex, and now I decrease the signal in this receptor, and everything below compensatory disappears. Now, pectoralis is strong. Lower trap is strong, yes? But as soon as I make the stimulus again, now it's back. Got it? But maybe this is not the upper trap, no upper dysfunction. Maybe in this case we have an upper upper dysfunction. This is, I name it the fractal. It's a big chain of compensations. In this case, probably it's going to be a nociceptor. Nociceptor, we have a many. We test many nociceptors. We test neospinothalamic. We test paleoreticularis. We test paleospinothalamic. We test paleospino hypothalamic. Uh, uh, we test spinohypothalamic, we test uh, uh, mesencephalic, we test tecta, tecta auditory, tecta vision, everything is in neurology. I have seen them in the books all my life, but nobody tells me how to use them. What is the purpose? Now we have the purpose, we can use practically, we can use them, we can find and treat the patient. Now, in this case, we have here Golgi. I'm going to use a fast technique just to find the priority. Hold a second. Talking above. Above is crew touch. Crew touch is nice. Wow, marvelous. But when the crew touch is dysfunctional, it's one of the worst nociceptors. He nociceptor is in, the, in his face. If I rub his face, this everything comes back and it can weak again. If he compress and decrease the signal because it's nociceptor, this one is. Because as soon as he compressed the nociceptor, degrees the nociceptive signal, now the, noci the, the less, the, the sec or other dysfunctional body becomes stronger, and then the spindle cell becomes stronger. To fix his shoulder, until now, is your diagnosis. I need to find the, the compensatory of the crew touch. You will see how I'm going to treat this dysfunction in the shoulder. Hold sec. His pro original problem is crude touch here and paleo reticular is there. Now, my treatment, until now, I have, I have treated nothing. I just do some, some details to, and test to see where is the problem. The treatment is here. Software. I need to rock and slap very soft. It's like a keyboard in a computer. Very soft. I don't need to do massage, strong massage, or make a, or make a strong adjustment. 
or make or try to move something. We don't need it. This is software. In the computer, you don't need to hammer the keyboard with a, to, to, to make a, a stimulus. It's soft. It's software. We have a fracture, I need to take him to the brain to the operating room. I'm not a big surgeon too. But because this is not hardware, this is software, we can treat this one, we can treat the fascia, we can treat the organ, we can treat everything just with the stimulus. But we need to know what the stimulus. We need to know who is the parent. We need to know which one is the top priority that is going to erase all the compensatory dysfunctions. We have the tools to find it. We have the tools to fix it. We don't need to exhaust the passion. We need to exhaust ourselves. We need to think. Peter is just thinking 99% and 0.01 of intervention. This is going to be the practical neurology. Neurology is amazing, but most of the time, neurology is about theory. Blah, 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 the back to keep, go to there, then the pathway, go, and, and, do give pills. Okay. Give pills. Or give, or, or give a massage, or give a, or crack the patient. No, 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 it's not a treatment. We need to do the same thing, neurology, with a proper stimulus in the proper receptor in the proper way. Sometimes it's not a receptor, sometimes it's the brain nuclei. We have tools to test the brain nuclei and to fix them. If this is the priority, great. If not, we need to go to the priority and everything come, everything go to disappear. Thank you very much. Because I'm a teacher of fashion manipulation, and I want to say that uh, all the points that he was touching me are points of uh, fashion that we treat in fashion manipulation, and uh, so we just have to connect uh, the different uh, knowledge. Thank you. Thank you very much. physiological logic. We don't use any kind of energies, we don't use blind approaches, we don't use any kind of blind touch. Uh, we try to find the appropriate stimulus in the appropriate area, uh, manipulate with a certain modality of stimulus and see the result. It works absolutely marvelous and we work with many problems of uh, skeletal muscular pains, uh, we work with um, headaches, uh, dizziness, urogenital problems, digestive issues, peripheral nerve entrapments, uh, we treat, uh, for example, cranial faults uh, in, uh, sorry to say, but five minutes because it's just Golgi's in the sutures and we get the result the same as osteopathy uh, people do. Uh, we know how to trace reoccurrence, we know how to uh, find out why the problem comes back because there are many, many things why it comes back and we study them all. Uh, normally, if the practitioner in PDTR treats the problem well, there's not going to be any reoccurrence and it's not going to be a problem with this, uh, with this part of the body. Many patients have food intolerance. About 5% of the food intolerance is hereditary. We, can, we need only to withdraw the food. But 95% of the food intolerance is just because we have a dysfunction, not most of the time, not receptors, that create like a reaction decrease the stimulation of some glands or some organs and we cannot produce the substance to assimilate this kind of food. Food can be treated by PDTR. Most of the things are neurology. Brain is, is the, the boss in the body. And allergies, if we close the, the, if we close the BBB, blood-brain barrier, we close the mucos or we close the gut uh, lining, we can improve the patient, because if the patient is not in contact with the proteins, foreign proteins, we can improve even the, the aller allergies. We have many options to work using the neurology. Neurology is the number one now. We need to treat the, with the patient with the neurology tools. 
We invite you today to be with us. We're going to be uh, here tomorrow, and after tomorrow, teaching, uh, giving more details about PTR, and I hope you will, you will be there. Thank you very much. Say, I like the idea of slapping my patient to get them better. <laughs> so I will try it out.